So why do we have a bathroom vent? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And the first one is kind of obvious, and that is that when you have your private library time in the bathroom and you wanna have some privacy, and you wanna make sure that nobody's hearing the things that are going on in the bathroom, well, you're gonna flip that fan on, and that's gonna make some noise, and it's also gonna expel all of the unpleasantness so that when somebody walks in behind you, they're not having to deal with that. So that's the number one reason. The second reason, which is actually the more important reason, is that most people like to take hot showers. And if you're my wife, you're taking a shower that is so hot that you barely have any of your skin left at the end of your shower. But with that being said, you know, most people will take hot showers no matter what. The problem is that when you're taking a hot shower is that you have warm, moist air, which will tend to rise because the ambient air is cooler. And as it rises, it will stick to the ceiling and then it condenses and then you start having problems with mold and mildew. So you have a bathroom vent in your bathroom to actually prevent that from happening. It actually moves the air around and starts to expel that more moist air out of the bathroom so that you don't have that issue. The problem with this house is that this house was built in 1978, which means it's 44 years old. This bathroom was remodeled a year and a half ago before we bought it. And yes, this is a master bathroom, but it's pretty small. Again, 1978, uh, bathrooms were just weren't that big back then, but it is remodeled. But the one thing that they didn't do when they remodeled it was they didn't put the bathroom vent this video we're going to talk a little bit about how we did the installation it was a little bit daunting to do but it actually wasn't that difficult uh, they sell kits at home depot and i can leave links to those kits in the description and uh, you can actually go to home depot buy the entire kit for the box with the lighting and then you can actually vent it outside so a couple different things you have to think about number one there actually was a light fixture in here so i was able to reuse that wiring but the unit that i bought actually is a vent with a light but I did have to cut a big chunk out of the ceiling and I also had to cut a hole in my roof, which that was probably the scariest thing I've ever done because the last thing I do is cut a hole in a perfectly good roof. The good news is that when I was done, nothing leaked, everything worked perfectly, but I'm gonna show you in this video exactly how we did things. So stick around and we'll get to it. As we walk into the bathroom, the first thing you're going to notice is that we have a single light switch, which is attached to the light with no vent. And the first thing we want to do is take apart this light fixture. This light fixture is attached to a junction box, which is attached to the floor joist above us. Had this been a second floor or a top floor where it's exposed to the attic space, then this junction box would be attached to the roof rafters. But in our case, we are on the second floor, so it's just attached to the floor joist above us. We will now cap off all the wires, just in case somebody decides to flip on a switch and electrocute me, which would make for a very bad day. We will now take our entire assembly and put it up on the ceiling, where we will mark where we will want to mount this within the ceiling. Once we have these marks in place, we will take a knife and start scoring the location where this entire unit will be mounted. And once we have that general location, we can make a few deeper scoring marks and then take our drywall saw and cut through the drywall. This saw makes a huge mess, but it does a pretty good job of cutting through everything and exposing where all of this insulation is. We want to keep all this insulation because we're going to be reusing it once we put everything back together. And once we have most of the insulation out of the way, we are able to make our final cut between the two joists and we are going to save all of this insulation for later use. We will now go outside and we'll start making some measurements and figure out exactly where I want the exterior vent to be. Unfortunately, I couldn't put this on the wall, which would have been preferable because the wall itself is lower than where the vent is. So I had to go through the roof. Since this was a pretty chilly day, I took my butane torch just to heat things up. I'm not really trying to burn anything. And in fact, that would be a bad thing if we burn through the roof. We're just trying to heat things up and make the glue and the tar for the shingles be a little bit loose and pliable so that nothing cracks and also so we can get through all of the layers. Since this is an architectural roof, it's much easier to pick apart all the layers, but there are several of them. So you just want to take your time, make sure you make things nice and pliable, and then pull things apart so you're not cracking anything. Now that we have the exact location of where we want to put this vent, we're going to cut through the roof. And I'm not going to lie to you, this is terrifying. You don't realize how terrifying it really is to put a four inch hole in your roof until you really start cutting. But it had to be done and in the end it worked out pretty well. We 
We are now going to start putting together the vent that will be attached to the roof. We have this coupler that goes onto the vent. And then we have this accordion hose that's basically aluminum. And we want to attach it on to this coupler. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but you can work it onto there as well as you can. And then I was able to take a couple of zip ties to make my initial connection just to make sure everything is nice and snug. And now we take some aluminum tape, which will make this fairly airtight, or at least as airtight as we possibly can. We don't want cold or hot air from the outside seeping into the attic space or into the bathroom directly from the outside. And now I'm going to carefully climb up to the top of this ladder. I'm not a fan of heights, but you do what you have to do. Everything is still nice and pliable, and we want to put a nice thick bead of this flashing cement. I'm used to seeing flashing cement that's black, but this is more of a silicone-based flashing cement. And I'm carefully putting a nice thick bead all the way around where this vent is going to be mounted to the roof. Now, typically you're not too worried about the area below, but I wasn't going to take any chances and I wanted to make sure that this was going to be waterproof. I knew we were going to get some rain over the next couple days and I didn't want to take any chances. Once we have this bead down, we want to carefully push everything down flat and we are going to attach screws to the four corners. And once we have those screws in place, we are also going to put a little bit of that flashing cement on top of the screws just for a little bit of added insurance. We are now back inside and we are able to make sure that the hose is coming in in the exact place that we wanted it to. We are also able to free the wiring from the existing junction box and start marking the location of our new vent to the floor joists. We also need to open up the box and expose all the wiring from the inside. Since we only have one switch, we will have all the wires attached to that one switch. We will put all of these wires through this little grommet, which will expose it to the house wiring. We're now going to prep the hose to be attached to the fan itself. Once we have that done, we'll start mounting the box to the floor joists. Have a couple of screws that go in place first and then we secure everything down at this point we can connect all of the wiring all of this wiring will be tucked inside of the box so that it acts as a junction box and it's nice and clean and secure i also took a little bit of electrical tape to make sure things were secure and out of the way and that we don't have any chance of causing any sort of short down the road we are now ready to put the ceiling back together so we want to clean things up square everything off and start putting some of the insulation back into the ceiling. Now, I didn't show this in the video, but I did create this little bit of a box. It's a place where we can attach the drywall to the ceiling, and it is also a place that gives us a little bit of a lip so that we have a place to put more insulation. This is where the big brain calculations come into place, and we need to make sure that everything is perfect. I just wanted to make sure that I had one piece of drywall and not a bunch of little pieces just to make everything a lot cleaner and it would also require a lot less mudding and taping. Now that we have our piece of drywall, we're able to secure it with a few screws and make sure everything's nice and smooth. A professional would take maybe a day or two to get everything perfect, but I suck at drywall. I got the tape in place. I use just a regular fiberglass tape to put it in place and then I use mud to get everything nice and smooth. Like I said, a professional would have done this in about a day. It took me about three days of mudding and scraping and a lot more mudding and scraping. This was a final little bit of mud just to make everything nice and smooth. Then I was able to do my final bit of sanding and then I got smart and used my phone just to see if there were any shadows or any divots. And we did our final little bit of touch up and wiping everything down. Now this is where I got smart and I put the fixture in place just to see if there were any shadows. And when I turned on the light, sure enough, there were. 
So I was able to get my sander out and make some final little adjustments to the ceiling so that we had it as perfect as possible. Since this is going to be where most of the moisture will now be concentrated as it is sucked outside, I wanted to make sure that I use some kills and that is a antimicrobial and will keep the mold and mildew down if it ever should decide that it wants to form in this area. Once we did the kills, we were able to take some ceiling paint and I just want to paint around this section so I can put the fixture all together. We did take some time later on to finish off the ceiling and to do some repairs but at this point we just wanted the fixture in place and to start using the bathroom again and everything seemed to look pretty good from this point. It works! That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. As you can tell, there was nothing really super hard about this. There's some things you have to consider. Again, we had to cut a hole in the ceiling and we really had to cut a hole in the roof, which really scared me a little bit. But as you can see, things worked out great. We had torrential rainstorms after this project was completed for about two weeks and we had no leaks. So I'm gonna call this project a success. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you liked it, don't forget to like the video. And if I have earned your subscription, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel. And if you want to be notified of future videos, don't forget to hit that bell and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great week everybody.